Hi, my name's Jason. It's week seven, day 49 of my full-time chronic pain rehabilitation journey. Today, I'm gonna to continue a story I started on day 46, my miracle story in the making. Uh, at the end of the video, I'll also share an important tip about how to prevent injury. So stick around. First though, a quick status update. I slept until 10. That's okay because it's my recovery day. That's what it's for. I was so tired, my wife was so kind to let me rest, which I really, really appreciated. I have noticed some improvements. One, my posture is dramatically better than it was when I started on my rehabilitation journey. It has a lot to do with the exercises that my personal trainer has taught me, and I'm really, really grateful for him. Um, I also have a personal best. Today, on my recovery days, or recovery day, I go to the dry sauna and I sit in there for a very long time and stretch for a long time. And today I was at 50 minutes, which is a personal best. And last night I took my wife on a date. I've been a little self-absorbed while I've been doing this rehabilitation and I finally popped my head up and looked around and went, holy crap, I haven't taken my wife out on a date for like over a month. So not only am I going to re re rehabilitate my body, I'm going to actually preserve my marriage. So good news on that front. And I have noticed a couple of problems which are not directly related to my um, rehabilitation. One is, this could be related because it's possibly related to water in my swimming. I have an ear problem where I'm feeling pressure in my right ear pretty consistently. So it could be an ear infection or something. I've got to carve out some time this week to go to the doctor and figure out what that's all about. I also have a finger on my right hand, my middle finger, that uh, there's a problem with the tendon. And in the morning, it kind of locks up and I can't quite straighten it. I don't think it's rheumatoid arthritis. There's actually another name for the condition and it may require surgery, I don't know, but I gotta get that looked at. And I still have that numbness issue when I'm sleeping, sometimes one hand or both hands go numb. So I've gotta carve out some time this week to go to the doctor and get those things looked at. So you will have little aches and problems that may be related to your rehabilitation going on while you're doing it. You're just gonna have to take time to deal with those. All right, on to the continuation of my story. So this is my miracle story part two. Again, it's a miracle story in the making. I don't know how for sure how it's gonna end. Maybe it won't be a miracle kind of the ending, but I, I think there is a reason to hope that it will be and a, a rational reason to believe that, that it's gonna work. All right, so in day 46, I talked about um, this story in terms of analogies. I had two. One is um, dominoes. You can think of multiple lines of dominoes kind of kicking off and converging. Um, that's one way of looking at it. Another that I thought of is uh, multiple threads kind of weaving a tapestry. And if the idea of a tapestry sounds too grand, you could just call it a quilt, a miracle quilt. All right, so in the first story, uh, first part of the story on day 46, I talked about um, several little threads or lines of dominoes. One is I had this repeat prompting to go all in and give more than I had before. The other was psychedelics. The other was meditation, um, diet, and then the beginning of my supportive routines that are allowing, allowing me to keep exercising all the time. And I ended that, uh, the day 46 video, actually my camera ended the day 46 video for me, right around the time I was gonna talk about how we got to our new gym. And this new gym is where I met someone in the sauna that taught me about uh, cryotherapy and also Indian sweat lodges. And both of these things nudged my supportive routines in a new direction. And I think it's helped me keep going. So how did I get to that gym? Well, my wife wanted to go to a different gym. She didn't like Vasa. Why isn't so important? But um, I'm kind of a cheapskate. I'm economically conservative, so to speak. And looking at the cost of a Vasa membership, which is like 25 bucks a month for each of us, so 50 bucks, and then this new gym, which was almost 190 a month, for me was a no-go from the beginning. Um, but it was important to her, and so I listened, and she went over there. And when she did, she had this prompting, I don't know where it came from, to look at personal trainers there. Probably because I was looking at personal trainers online and not finding any in my local area that had either a physical therapy background or an injury specialty. And so she started looking at the uh, trainers there at the gym, and one of them did. And again, these guys are rare, they're golden. And I interviewed him and it turned out that he, he was the personal trainer that I selected. And so that was kind of miraculous in and of itself. And then my personal trainer, because of his PT background, knows a lot of doctors and has worked with a lot of uh, medical professionals, knew of one that he thought was frankly amazing. He'd never encountered anyone as professional and as good as this guy. And so I took 
That information, I signed up on the waiting list. It was like almost a two month waiting list to get in to see the guy. And so I signed up and uh, I went, uh, I had my first visit with him. And I think he's the missing piece of the puzzle. There may be other pieces that come along later, but right now this is the next major piece. And it is how do I get my cinder block of a back to loosen up? And the two techniques that he's employing right now, dry needling and uh, traction, I think are that missing piece of the puzzle that's gonna allow my back to loosen because so far everything I've done has strengthened the rest of my body. It's enabled me to exercise, but my back is still as tight as a cinder block. It's like a rock back there. I mentioned how when he was doing the dry needling techniques, he could barely turn the needles. Um, it was almost as if, um, well, they were actually kind of starting to bend, like the needles would bend instead of turn. So it's really, really tight back there. And I think this is what's preventing me from being able to sit for protracted periods of time, stand for protracted periods of time, which is what keeps me being unproductive, either in my job or any interest that I want to pursue. So I really feel like this might be the thing that turns everything around. It may take a while, but it's a new avenue to explore, and I think it's the missing link, if you will. All right. So is this going to be a miracle story? Is there going to be a miracle ending? Again, I don't know for sure. I'm still in the middle of it, but I have cause for optimism and cause for hope. And I've been thinking about why me? Why am I so special? And the answer is, I don't think I am. Um, if there is one thing that's special about me, I think it's my willingness to be open and share things that other people might, might not be willing to do. And because of that, if I am the recipient essentially of a miracle, I can share that with other people. It doesn't have to just be my miracle. It can be their miracle and your miracle too. Um, I have an example from the Bible. So Abraham is kind of selected by God to essentially be the patriarch of a lineage. And he's told that through his seed or his posterity, all the world will be blessed. Well, I don't think that's happening here, but it's kind of happening in a microcosm where I think that maybe God has put me in a position where I can bless the lives of others. And so if I'm the recipient of, the, of, of an immense blessing, I think so far I have been, that my job essentially is to pass that blessing along to everyone else. It's not that I'm so special that I get this one-off miracle that nobody else can have. It's my job to share it with you. And I believe the key element in sharing this miracle is what Hal Elrod calls the miracle equation. I've been doing it this whole time, but I didn't have the terminology to explain it. And what it is, is unwavering faith coupled with extraordinary effort. And that pretty much summarizes everything I've done to date. I have had unwavering faith. I mean, I've, I've facilitated a little bit, but my actions don't show it. And I've employed every technique and remedy I can think of. I've made every effort I can to do things that are very difficult and uncomfortable for me. And the two things coming together, I think, sets me up in a position where either God or the universe can work with that. And I think this is the part that's transferable. Not only my experience and my miracle, but the miracle equation, what I've done and the techniques that I've provided to you, uh, the strategies and the principles, those are transferable. I can't guarantee that they're gonna result in a miracle for you any more than they're gonna result in a miracle for me, but I've gotten so much closer this time than I ever have before. And I think this is the part that I can share with you that could make the difference in your life and your rehabilitation journey. Uh, now for the tip that I promised. Uh, record keeping prevents injury. I have spreadsheets where I log every exercise I've ever done since I started working out uh, this go around. And I do flag the cells of the spreadsheet yellow if there's an uh, exercise that causes me problems. And there's one exercise in particular that I've had to flag over and over and over again. And because of that, I'm dropping the exercise completely. The exercise that's on my hit list is called hip abduction. And I've done some research on this, and it's a very, very um, injury-prone exercise. I'm not the only one who struggled with it, and so I've decided to drop it from my regimen. If I hadn't kept these records, I might not see that as clearly. And also, when I go to exercise and do the exercise again, I know exactly how much I lifted last time, how many reps, how much weight, and so I can easily adjust either just a little bit upwards or keep it the same, depending on how I did last time. And that keeps me from jumping wildly from one weight to another because depending on the make and model of the machine, the weight bearing characteristics are different. And if you don't note those, um, you're going to pick the wrong weight and you can hurt yourself. 
So make sure that you are keeping records of your exercises so that you know what you did last time. And if there is an exercise in particular that causes you problems, you nix it, you get rid of it. Fighting for your life means acting on the promptings you receive and with unwavering faith and extraordinary effort. And when you do that, when you embrace this principle, this miracle equation, you can start a chain reaction that will take you much farther than you ever thought was possible. That's certainly what's happening to me. Have you received any promptings you haven't acted on? What's keeping you from exercising faith and exerting extraordinary effort in your own life? Please share your thoughts in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe.